Hello all, welcome, and thank you for joining this breakout session. I'm Corey Green, Javelin's 3D Scanning Product Manager. In this session, we'll be covering handheld 3D scanning using Artech 3D's structured light systems and demonstrating comparing the scan data against CAD for inspection purposes. The demonstration portion of this webinar will be showcasing the handheld Artech Space Spider. It's a high resolution scanner designed for parts that fit on a desk. It captures both geometry and color information. Mesh inspection and reporting will be done with Geomagic Control X by 3D Systems. It has a CAD style environment that allows users to create inspection routines using familiar tools like Smart Dimension to compare mesh data from scanners to, to existing CAD data. 3D scanning is unique in its ability to support both reverse engineering and inspection applications. For example, we frequently hear that CAD is not available, not allowed to be shared, inaccurate or incomplete. Sometimes, especially with legacy parts, math data may not exist or may have been lost. It's common to use scanning in conjunction with reverse engineering to rectify these issues. On the other hand, many users are looking to scan in order to verify part geometry. This could be done for a variety of reasons. The classical approach is inspecting new parts, ensuring that they meet spec. This could be internal or as part of an incoming QC process. Alternately, you could scan and compare tested prototypes to ensure your simulation is accurate. Finally, worn parts can be scanned to quantify the effects of long-term use. Structured light scanners project a grid of light onto the subject, then capture images of the scene with cameras. The distortion of the grid is used to calculate the underlying geometry of the object. Each capture frame is registered and compared to neighboring frames in real time to build a preview of the part on screen. With tethered scanners, like the Artec Space Spider, this is displayed on your laptop screen or PC monitor. Artec 3D's scanners do not require the use of tracking or alignment dots. Removing these tracking stickers from the process saves a significant amount of operator time. To maintain tracking, Artec scanners capture color information with every frame and use grayscale contrast to determine the position of subsequent frames. This is shown in the video on the right hand side. Further, you will notice that every tenth frame is captured in full color. This texture can be wrapped around a completed mesh for rendering purposes if desired. Depending on the scale of parts you typically intend on scanning, Different scanning solutions are available with appropriate technologies and 3D resolutions. For very small parts, the Artec Micro is a desktop automated capture cell. Handheld scanners include the Space Spider for small parts and the Eva for medium parts. The Leo for slightly larger parts is uniquely portable in the 3D scanning industry with onboard batteries and screens. You scan without a laptop and process the data when you're back at the office. Finally, the Ray is a tripod mounted LiDAR scanner designed for extremely large objects and area scanning. In the upcoming demonstration, we're going to be scanning a used lower front control arm. Based on the part size, we've selected the Artec Space Spider. It's a high resolution handheld scanner, excellent for small parts. The Space Spider must be connected to a computer via USB during scanning. It also requires a power source. This can be a battery pack for portability or a standard wall socket. Today we're going to be scanning a control arm that's been cast. It also has a machine stud on one end, we have a pressed in stud on the other, as well as a tapped hole that we've inserted uh, a bolt into. So we're going to be begin scanning with the Artec Spider. I'm looking at the laptop screen right now to make sure that I'm scanning from the proper distance. And we're slowly traversing the part to capture all of the 3D data. We're capturing it from as many angles as we can. Moving end to end to capture all of the mounting points as well as all of the geometry from the casting. Great, we've cut everything from this side. I'm gonna rotate it, and we'll scan it from the other side to catch what, we, what was hidden to us. 
So begin again. Excellent, that's the top surface done. We'll flip it upside down to capture the bottom of the part. As we're scanning, our tech studio gives us a histogram showing the distance away from the part. On screen, we can see that there's blue color where objects in frame are too far, are too far away and objects that are shown in yellow, orange, or red are too close. Excellent. And for the last position, We'll get in frame, get everything at the right distance, and begin. Excellent. That's all the scanning we need to do. The rest of the post-processing and aligning the data happens in Artec Studio. Now that we've collected our data with the Artec Space Spider, we can use Artec Studio to post-process the data and ready it for export. On screen right now are the four scans we just completed. Right now they're being shown in full color mode. We can change that to scan color to make it a little bit easier to interpret what's what. First thing we need to do is delete the table that the object was scanned on. We'll use the eraser tool and we'll use it on one scan at a time. I'm using a cutoff plane selection. By suggesting an area, the software will extrapolate that plane and we can delete the table. Let's do that for all four scans. Great, that's done. We can exit the editing, the editing tools. Next on our list is to bring all of these four scans together. In the alignment tool, we have one fixed scan in blue, and we can choose one floating scan in green. We can select common pairs of points. We can align those markers as suggestions, and we can use the align tool to let the software actually make the final alignment. Now these two are separated by the flip, so we can find something on the edge that's matching, something on the back of the button, the casting seam, and the end of the stud will be close enough. Again, the points that we're using as markers are just recommendations, so the software can use those as much or as little as it needs to. Great, that's the alignment done. Next on our list is to register all of the scan data. Registration is a process that takes all of the individual scan frames and moves them out along their nearest neighbors to remove duplicates and to ensure that the scans agree properly with each other. Now that we've completed the registration algorithm, we can see that there's still a little bit of noise from the table left over, as well as some hanging data around the edges of the scans. 
we can run outlier removal to deal with this noise. Now that we've cleaned up a bunch of the noise, the last step that we want to run is the fusion. The fusion takes all of the individual scan frames, compares them against their neighbors, and generates the actual mesh file. Now that the Sharp Fusion algorithm has completed, a fifth item has been added to our object list, Sharp Fusion 1. It's a 15 megabyte mesh file. It contains all of the surface accuracy from the original scan data. We can read the RN99 stamping. We can see where there was masking tape over the threads. The split line is visible on both sides of the part. We can even see some of the surface rust that's present in the bushing hole. This object can be exported as it is right now into control x but there are a couple things that we can do if we're if we'd like the first is we can run a small object filter and delete everything except the largest object that makes sure there's no hanging data that might be small and confusing later on during the inspection process further we can do hole filling to evaluate if there's any holes in the mesh and patch them for inspection purposes this is generally not done as you risk creating data that doesn't truly represent the actual part scan. At this point, we will export the mesh as an STL file in preparation for inspection in Control X. For the inspection portion, we will be using Geomagic Control X by 3D Systems. We'll begin building our recipe by importing the native CAD. In this case, it's a SolidWorks file, but you can also use translation formats like STEP or IDIS or native files from other CAD systems. That's brought in. In general, to begin the alignment process, we always add an initial alignment to the recipe. After that, you can use any combination of other alignment structures. For example, a best fit alignment makes sense for organic parts, but in other cases, you might use a datum alignment, building a datum structure from features from the CAD or constructed features, or you could build a 3 to one alignment in the same manner. Now that our alignments have been added, beginning our inspection routine, we'd like to continue building our recipe by adding some geometric comparisons. The first is a 3D compare. This generates a false color heat map showing where the measured data is higher or lower along surface normals to the CAD data. I've assigned a color bar range of plus minus two millimeters and an acceptable tolerance of plus minus half. Next, let's add some geometric dimensions to our inspection routine. The first dimension I'd like to add is a radial dimension on the upper stud. You can see that the nominal reference dimension is called out here, and we can assign any tolerance we'd like. Let's repeat down here for this stud as well. We'll keep both of these two views in the same group over on the left-hand side. This means that these will be captured in the same image on the actual report. As you can see in the bottom left, the image that will be presented in the report is shown. We can assign the view that we currently have to that picture by clicking this button here. That means that this group will be shown as a single page in the report with the current view screen shown on screen. To the same group, we can add other features that should display in the same plane. We can add a radial dimension to the inside of this hole. We can also add a circularity on that cylinder. Because those two features are defined by the same basic geometry, they will appear linked in the tolerancing. Now that we've chosen our alignment routine and selected our comparisons in geometric dimensions, we can import measured data to compare against the CAD. In this case, we are selecting the STL file we exported from our tech studio. However, Control X also accepts point clouds. I'll rebuild the document to allow the evaluation to occur. Now that the evaluation is completed, let's review the data. First, in green, we have the three radial dimensions, each passing. The deviation is below the tolerance value that we've associated with those holes. 
we do note that the circularity that we set for that hole has failed. We noted that that hole was significantly ovalized when we were reviewing the scan data. Further, let's review the 3D comparison. In red, we would see parts of the data where the data is high. In blue, we expect to see areas of the STL file where the data is low. If we spin this around, we can see that there's a blue area here and a blue area around the seam. There's a red area at the other side as well. We do note that most of the part is within the half millimeter acceptable tolerance that we've set. Let's review the report we've created. The first page shows our company logo coming directly from the template, as well as the data regarding this particular scanned file. The second page shows the measured data. We included the serial number. The third page describes the best fit alignment. It gives us statistical information about how well the alignment was able to perform and shows an overlay of the two files. The next page shows 3D comparison. It shows us one snapshot based on the viewport we selected and shows it in false color with the colors described and using the correct tolerances. It also includes statistical information. The next page shows the viewport for all of our geometric information. This includes the three radial dimensions we took, as well as the circularity. Each is described both with detailed annotation view on the actual picture, as well as in a chart below the image. Now that we've created the report, we can save it as a PDF. Now that that's complete, we can return to Control X. If we have more scan data, we can replace the measured data with additional STL files and generate reports. This allows us to reuse the routine we've built and reuse the report structure, generating reports quickly and easily. In addition to the workflow shown in the demonstration, the scanning process can also be automated. For repetitive work, replacing the operator with a robotic arm ensures consistent results. Alternately, multiple scanners can be connected to a single laptop allowing the simultaneous capture of multiple sides of the object. Post-processing can be completed with Artec's built-in autopilot mode, greatly reducing operator time. While it is common to build, generate, and review reports from Control-X, the software is also capable of running autonomously. After building the inspection routine, server installations of Control-X can monitor file system folders, automatically process incoming mesh files, and export data directly to your ERP system. It can also batch process mesh files and generate trend reports across the batch of serialized parts. Javelin is proud to offer scanning, reverse engineering, and inspection as part of our professional services. Operating out of our Oakville, Ontario headquarters, services are a great way to leverage 3D scanning's power prior to full implementation. Thank you very much. Have a great day.